Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This match is going to be between Quanro and 815. Going to be on Great Barrier Reef, which a uh, three-player map, it's honestly, it feels kind of like a stereotypical three-player map, just like any standard three-player map that has kind of that um, circular sort of look to it, where you have that natural expansion right around the corner with a ramp. Um, yeah, yeah, there's some extra minerals out in the field in here, but it just, I don't know, it feels very stereotypical. So uh, I'm trying to think the spiral one that was in last season someplace that this reminds me a lot of. Um, but anyway, it just feels like almost not even a potpourri map, just another flat standard map, uh, particularly for Zerg versus Zerg. Between these two guys, 815 has to have a pretty solid confidence boost, having just absolutely rocked, really. If you can show some of that Mulus micro, he had from game one in this match. He should be able to pull this out pretty easily, but he's going up against Quanro. And yeah, there might be an emotional edge briefly for A15, but Quanro don't care about no emotional advantage. He is aggression incarnate. Oftentimes doesn't show it because he's CJ, and you got to be a complete emotional robot, at least on the exterior. But you can see it in his gameplay. Um, Quanro, a lot of people give him flack, I think, for doing kind of all-in stuff against the other races. But the thing is, is I feel like Quanro doesn't plan to go all in um, most of the time. I feel like he goes all in when he realizes he has the opportunity to do so. When he's like, okay, I know I can win this match, that they're not going to be able to adapt to my all in, and there's essentially nothing they can do about it. So let me do it end the game now. And I like that he does that, where other players essentially will let those opportunities go and go for kind of the longer, safer route, um, which sometimes I feel like gives certain opponents an opportunity to get. But he has the killer instinct, is what essentially what I'm trying to get at. Looks like Quanro starting at the three o'clock position in blue he's going to have a pretty big advantage just to start he's sending that overlord to that 12 o'clock position where we have 815 in red and on this map i expect to see essentially one base play straight to layer because uh, whenever you have a ramp like that that just minimizes the effectiveness of zerglings so probably in and with the close uh, kind of positions you'll see here on a map like this yeah i expect to basically see either um, extractor first into pool, nine pool, essentially nine extractor, nine pool, um, or over pool, or maybe in a rare instance, a 12, um, a kind of a 12 pool for maximum economic effect. But generally, yeah, expect to see the nine pools, um, the over pools, and the gas on a nine. So, nevertheless, it should be a pretty heads up match. I actually expect both players to go maybe identical build orders here. It looks like we are seeing 815 go for that gas first. Um, and we'll see, it looks like Quanro is in fact going for gas later. Um, probably going to go, he's got that overlord, so I think he's going to go for an overpool here. So hopefully he proves me right. But And that's actually going to put him in a really nice position economically. He's going to basically have additional drones to work with um, right here, and that he's going to have more gas, he's going to have um, more, well, he's going to have more minerals. He's going to be behind on gas. But critically, what's going to happen here is 815 is at a severe build order disadvantage because Quanro is going to be able to take an additional hatchery either inside of his interior if he wants to play extremely safe or more likely at his natural expansion where 815 is not going to be able to take an additional base. Um, and as with Quanro having that overlord at that 12 o'clock position as well, he's going to know exactly how many Zerglings he needs to produce to counter 815. So I almost feel like this is uh, m might be over before it's begun. So maybe 815 can pull something out to kind of switch this around, but we'll have to see, honestly, at this level of Zerg versus Zerg, a lot of people say, well, it's a coin flip, and sometimes it is. Sometimes you'll see an amazing player like Jadong where he can make up the difference. But uh, ultimately, I don't think Quan is the type of player who will throw this away. It looks like he's now taking that expansion. Really, there's going to be about probably 30 seconds to a minute, minute, maybe a minute and a half, where you're going to see 815 have his spire up uh, well before Quanro, but all Quanro needs to do is throw a lot of Zerglings at that front door, make sure that he kind of puts them out there and uses them as kind of target bait, so that 815 is really pinned to his base defending against the Zerglings. Well, Quanro uses it, and he's going to be able to do that, because he's going to have additional larvae out there uh, to work with, and then all he has to, all he has to do is make sure that he um, uses those superior larva count to use those mutalisks to get his air force up, I should say, and then secure second gas. It should be elementary from there. So um, it's possible that 815 might be able to... I don't think he's going to waste the gas here on Zergling speed. Yeah, because that would just be a little bit suicidal at this stage, but 
it's possible he can kind of juke Quan Ro around and use just kind of splitting Zerglings up to, to kind of push through. Unfortunately for him, Quan Ro is very, very, very strong when it comes to micromanagement. And I've rarely seen him win a heads-up Zergling fight. For whatever reason, when it's just head Zergling versus Zergling, he micros it somehow, where you'd think it would be unmicrable. And here's a, a nice prime example right now, engaging right there, already able to take out a single Zergling. Uh, more Zerglings flooding down, but you can see Quan Ro's matching the numbers perfectly. Again, another... I don't know how he micros that, but as you can see, he's got um, six micro or six micro six. He has six micros. He has six zerglings left over, where there was a uh, fewer number of zerglings in the opposite end. And Quanro, yeah, now can start building the bonus zerglings while he gets his own spire up uh, and push up and yeah, make sure those mutalisks basically have to stay home. And all eight fifteen can really do to try to counter that. Maybe he can build some zerglings of his own but even then he's at the with that larval disadvantage he's not going to be able to push it and also the economic disadvantage you can see him trying to seal up his ramp he might be able to pull this if he has the zerglings with the mutalisks and that's really the key for him is to make sure that Quanro doesn't engage on his terms that he engages um, on 815's terms essentially with the mutalisks and the zerglings right there so the zerglings just get plowed through uh, a lot more rapidly but um, Quanro uh, he's really good at depicting the pace of play unfortunately so I'm not sure that he's really going to be able to do so I expect him to back up and just kind of micro around and wait um, at that stage and maybe even go for some of those end around attacks. Um, he actually has more zerglings moving up to the f to the front, so he might even make a, a dive at this ramp. Yeah, he's producing several zerglings with those spare larvae he has. Uh, again, he, he's going to have larvae spare, and it looks like he is going to make a breach at that ramp. He's oh, and it is breach. Mm, 815 not able to bring those zerglings back down, and with superior numbers, Quanro able to break through. You can see the frustration on 815's face just as the needle is coming out. So beautiful timing from Quanro. He timed that perfectly. Now he just needs to split these zerglings up and make sure those mutalisks are basically kind of like a dog trying to fetch two balls here. They're just, oh, where, where do they go? And um, Quanro actually diving in with a lot of his zerglings. He might even get a drone kill. I don't think he's gotten a drone kill just yet, but uh, and you can see the micro right there spreading out the zerglings fairly well. And just um, forcing those mulesks to stay home while basically, and wow, one mulesk still in there might get a kill. Looks like 815 microing that out of there um, very nicely, and Quanro continuing to be frustrating. You can see where these mules are trying to run back, and now Quanro starting to build his air force. He's going to have Scourge alongside, and what this is going to allow him to do is also take that second gas. And 815, again, not really going to be able to engage the way he wants to. He's at a severe disadvantage, having to put down a creep colony as well to deal with, uh, again, the additional larva that might be coming in the form of zerglings underneath. Um, so, and it looks like that single zergling still uh, hiding in that corner, still able to get something done, and still other little zerglings uh, just kind of wandering around there doing exactly what they need to do for Quanro. And Quanro now, yeah, has that second gas just ready to go. He can just sit back, be a little bit defensive, and essentially really... Uh, uh, not really. A15 is not going to be able to engage this because otherwise you're just going to take too many scourge hits. So he, unfortunately, it's up to him to do something right now. And the Zergling is providing some scouting information as they're wandering out. Looks like Quanro wandering up to engage, leaving some of these scourge back to almost kind of. Uh, never mind. Now he's gathering them up. I almost felt like he was going to try to bait this forward. But now he's got that second gas running. He's got two hatcheries to work with. And 815 is in a desperate situation. He's got a suicide somewhere. It looks like he is going to be able to get to the north and kill. Looks like two drones right there. So very nice dive to get two drones. Uh, now having to engage on the front. And it looks like Quanro is just going to press it from here. The Scourge running and Quanro doing damage as they're running. Just annihilating. Wow, I think several of those Scourge hit. But actually, beautiful micro from 815. He might come out with this. I'm not sure. We'll have to see where the reinforcements come from from both locations. Um, but it looks like Quanro should be able to mop this up. There's the reinforcements now. Only two Mutalisks left. So it looks like it's um, three on four plus a closer reinforcement point. 815 not able to win. Maybe if you could have drawn it back to a closer reinforcement point. He still might have been able to win that battle, but uh, nice uh, scourge pickoff in there, but yeah, not able to get it done.